Hello, my dear friends, my name is Alberto, and welcome to the last episode of Am for WordPress. It has been great to share with you the journeys of this video series. We went a long way in our quest to understand what it takes to succeed as content creators on the web platform. And in this last episode, we are going to do first a quick trip on memory lane and review what we set out to do, why we did it, and what we accomplished. And then we are going to get a glimpse of what is next for us, now that we know about AMP, the help that it provides when it comes to core web vitals and page experience, and how to take advantage of it in our WordPress site. We started our journey on a simple premise. Everything we do, we do it because we want to succeed as content creators. And we want to have a fair shot at success regardless of our technical skills or the amount of financial resources we have. We learned that successful sites generally do a variety of complex and challenging things very well. They offer great content quality, consistently good performance, excellent usability, accessibility, sound monetization strategy, effective monitoring. And we know that one of the most critical and most challenging of these success factors is good performance and accessibility. Then we ask, what is good performance? The right definition of good performance is one that is user-centric. This means that a website is said to have good performance if the experience it brings to users is a great one. So in a way, it's not absolute performance that matters, but rather user-perceived performance. Then we ask, how can we reason about performance in practice? And we learned about the Core Web Vitals Initiative and the new Page Experience Ranking Signal. The Core Web Vitals Initiative encompasses two things, a set of user-centric metrics, which can be measured and tracked during the execution of our web pages, and tools to measure and automate them. And Page Experience is a new search ranking signal that essentially says, all other things being equal, pages that bring better and more enjoyable experiences to users should rank higher on search engines. And this is just plain common sense because better experience benefits the user, the publisher, the advertiser, and the ecosystem as a whole. And this is great because with Web Vitals and Page Experience, we have unified guidance on exactly what we want to strive for. We know that if we ensure that our sites provide good Web Vitals, then we are on our way to making our users happy and having a fair shot at success as web content creators. Then came the next question, how in the world do we achieve good core web vitals? Achieving consistently good performance is very challenging in large part due to the intrinsic complexity of web development. There are many, many things that we need, need to be accounted for and addressed in our sites in order to achieve good core web vitals. And some of them are fully under our control and some of them Maybe not. There are two different paths that we can follow to achieve core web vitals. One is to invest technical and financial resources in developing and maintaining our site. And another path is to invest less resources and leverage more the power of tools to help us do the work. Ideally, we'll deal with all the involved factors influence core web vitals via tools that either automate some of them or provide clear and solid guidance on the path toward achieving them. And this is the path that we decided to take. And we learned about AMP, which is exactly that, a powerful and cost-effective tool that provides lots of help for us to achieve our page experience goal. We reviewed the design principles and key capabilities of AMP, and we discussed how directly they contribute to achieving good code with Vibe. In the next step of our journey, we discussed how to build full AMP sites on a content management system, or CMS in general, and more specifically, how to do that on WordPress and we learned about the official AMP plugin for WordPress, which makes it super easy to bring all the capabilities of AMP to your WordPress site. And finally, we started our deep dive of the official AMP plugin for WordPress, and we learned how it helps on generating AMP powered WordPress site via its different template modes. We first looked at using the reader template mode which although is not the most desirable option because you have to maintain two versions of your site, it is very useful in scenarios when you are using a theme and plugins that are not uncompatible and you want to start bringing and power experience to your users right away. We ended our journey by learning about how to use the AMP plugin in its ideal configuration, the standard mode. 
and using it, we built a site for our friend Sara, who is a yoga instructor wanting to bring great content related to her yoga practice to a large community of yoga enthusiasts. By choosing to leverage the capabilities of AMP, Sara made a trade-off decision. On one hand, the commitment to keep her site fully incompatible means that she has more limited options in terms of the components that she can shoot for her site. And on the other hand, it means that in return, she gets some guarantees on how her site is going to perform and therefore some guarantees on the user experience that her site is going to bring to her users and ultimately some guarantees on her chances of having a good return of her investment. And despite of the constraints that are needed to achieve some performance guarantees, Sarah's site can and has all the functionality and look and feel she needs to deliver good quality content to her users. In addition to enabling performance guarantees, choosing AMP also means that Sarah can effectively reduce the development and maintenance costs of her site. By leveraging AMP as a tool, helping on the front of the challenging success factor of performance. Remember the two paths that we said that we have to succeed on Core Web Vitals? Well, AMP as a technology is a representative of a path where we choose tools to help us with automation and guidance to reach our performance goals. The alternative path is either that we invest internal development and maintenance costs or outsource those tasks to development entities such as freelancers or development agencies. Certainly, the tooling path provides a much better ROI as resources not invested on achieving one success factor can be invested on other important aspects of your site. At this point, we are on our path to a successful content strategy, but we still need to account for and address the other aspects that we mentioned in episode one that successful sites generally do well. We need to create great content, and this simply means create content that brings value to our users. This means having a content strategy that involves some combination of information, education, inspiration, entertainment. We need to take advantage of different delivery formats, such as the classic text, images, videos, as well as modern content formats, such as web stories. And we need to take advantage of the capabilities of the web platform to build sites that make it easy for users to engage with them and draw value from them. We want to drive as much traffic to our site to tap into the web superpower of global reach. This means that we need to have our sites optimized for search engine so that they can properly index and rank our content, and also means that we need to tap as well into other distribution channels through which we can reach our audience, such as organic campaigns on social media, paid campaigns, and so on. We want our content creation efforts to be sustainable. This means that we need to maximize the return of our investment, or ROI. And to do this, we need to minimize cost and maximize revenue. For the former, we know that we can leverage the power of tools to make the work easier and cheaper for us. And for the latter, it means that we need to implement sound monetization strategies, which could be displaying ads, having subscriptions, donations, e-commerce, or a combination of this. Once we have integrated solution for each success factors, we need to do one more thing. We need to do monitoring. Specifically, we need to monitor how our site behaves with respect to each success factor so that we can calibrate it and steer it towards optimality any time that we need to. Although this is the end of this video series, our journey together as content creators is not over. I want to invite you to continue this journey with me by joining us and the Google Web Creators community. Google Web Creators is an initiative providing guidance, tools, and inspiration for creators like you to create and publish awesome content on the open web. You can join us and follow our content on the YouTube channel, follow our Twitter account, our Instagram account, and soon on the Web Creators Google site. I am very much looking forward to engaging with you there, and let's make it happen. <music>